he's all right? Because it's just a few minutes after three and it's nearing 100 degrees outside and we'll get this show on the road. Uh, called order public comment. The board takes public comment on all items in the regular agenda. Public input on a regular agenda item will be taken at its appropriate discussion time. Public input on an item not on the agenda or consent agenda may be identified and requested for consideration by the board at this time. The board may request an item to be placed on a future agenda or for a consent agenda item to be moved to the regular agenda for public comment. Do we have any public comment on items that are not a part of the agenda at this time? Anyone? Board members included? Then we will continue to the consent agenda. Consideration of approving the April 27th meeting minutes. Did any of you, all, all y'all have a chance to go through them? If so, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor with an aye? Aye. aye. Done. Let's move into the regular agenda. Oh, I'm sorry, oh. geez. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have it written right here on my paper too. I just hadn't looked down that far. Uh, we do have a new board member today. I, I wanted to uh, introduce and, and get uh, Mike Perry to say hello to everybody and say a little bit about himself. Mike, welcome. Uh, thank you, uh, Mike Perry. Uh, I guess everybody can hear me. Uh, we, uh, my wife and I went to school at Angela State, uh, lived here for almost 20 years back in the, back in the day, went off to Dallas-Fort Worth and just retired about three years ago, uh, just got back three years ago. Wanted to, uh, St. Angela gave a lot to us, so we wanted to try to give back as best we could. That's me. Used to be the uh, managing editor at the Standard Times a long time ago. Very cool. Back in the 70s. Very cool. Welcome. And on that note, we'll move into the regular agenda. Item number one, consideration of recommending matters related to the control of the prairie dogs at Mary Lee Park. We'll start off with a good one. Mm -hmm. okay. A quick, quick uh, orientation on this item. Uh, the area in question is Mary Lee Park, which is on the south side of the bridge. Uh, Knicker, Knickerbocker Road as you cross the lake on the right side. That is all Mary Lee Park right here. Let me zoom in. So the Nature Center is here. And, and if some years back, we had uh, established a very s small one single family prairie dog colony at the back of the Nature Center in the backyard. And uh, some of them escaped out the back fence and established a colony here at the back of the Nature Center. So <clears throat> over the last few years, they've been spreading, they've been spreading this direction this direction and currently they're right about here. They've occupied almost all this area here of the park. <clears throat> and at the current rate, you know, they'll occupy this next year and could be in the residence's yards next year. There's a, a small colony behind the nature center throughout the park. And this year we've started meeting with folks just to, just to talk about what, you know, what can be done, what's the situation, what can be done. Been getting advice from Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, U.S. Uh, Wildlife Fishery Services, and been trying to think about what to do. And so we decided to bring this to uh, the board just, just to have a discussion. I want to be open and honest about what the situation is and what the discussion is about what we do. <clears throat> there are safety and property loss concerns. The property loss is um, you know, the damage, some damage to the park, and if they expand into private residences, the damage to those those uh, private properties. And there is safety, some safety hazards. They do make a hole that's in the park, and if it's dark and late at night and it's not well lit, someone may trip and break a leg or something. And they do, um, <clears throat> there are, they do have fleas, and those fleas can carry the bubonic plague, 
and there have been cases of such in West Texas. So those are the concerns. Um, some of the things that we've thought about doing, all the, of all the options, our preferred option is contain them to create like a prairie dog town like Abilene has done, Lubbock has done. Um, I believe also Snyder may have done one. Um, and we could do it at that park or we could try to re relocate them to another location to start that. We could uh, work with the state park and relocate as many as we can over to the state park because there once was a colony there. I'm not sure if they're there now. Um, or we could move them out to Twin, Twin Buttes Park, which is, if we get permission to, which has a lot of acreage. Um, so those are some of, some of the options. If we do decide to build a prairie dog town, uh, we could do one here in this area here or out in this location. And depending on how large it is, the cost, if we did it in-house, we're looking at um, about, I remember, this is, I think this is, to do it in-house is about $50,000 and to contract it out would be about 75000 for this and you basically double it. It wouldn't quite be this big. What was the 75000 for? I'm sorry. If we contracted it, okay. if we build it in-house, it would be about 50000 okay. contracted 75000 and I think if if most of that expense would be the the retainer, right? Yes, it's basically a concrete yeah. wall. It's a very tall wall, but a good portion of it is underground to prevent, you know, burring it out. And I, I can't say it's going to be 100% effective keeping them all out, but if we can contain them, um, you know, if some get out, then we just trap those and move them back into the colony or, or somewhere else. But annual maintenance? Mike, please. Annual maintenance? Annual maintenance of the... Of the, that's a good question. For the wall itself, I don't think much, but in terms of just police in the area, um, I can't put a figure to it right now. W one good thing, though, is if we do establish a colony here or here, that Walden area is basically you don't have to mow that anymore. It, the, the prairie dogs take care of it. So in some ways you're doing less maintenance, and in other ways you're doing a little bit different maintenance. Carl, if you did a park over there and they overpopulate and it becomes too much, does that bring in extra disease or problems with overpopulation that they wouldn't even be contained in that area? Or do they regulate themselves when they're in a small, confined area? Well, they haven't, they haven't spread out this way probably because of the road. <coughs> I don't think there's anything keeping them from spreading into these other areas and continuing on down. Uh, as long as there's, I think they would continue to spread if there's not a big major barrier. And there's really nothing that keeps them under control except for predators. <coughs> and there's not really those predators at that location. There's a ferret that, ferrets and badgers that, that do hunt on them, but they're not at that location. And I'm not sure I want to introduce them yeah. here. No, yeah. no, no. I think maybe what maybe what Lori was asking though is, if if we were to make an area like say the the area you picked there in front of the nature center, right. the small area, and we were to 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 put a wall in there like that, and and wall in some of the uh, prairie dogs, at, at some point we're going to have to population control that area, right? Oh, I see. Yeah, I don't. I think they might. Hmm. They would probably. <laughs> okay. I would assume that they probably would level out population because there's not enough resources to expand. Yeah, actually. Come up, come up to the mic. Like Cat, come up to the mic. <laughs> our, our meetings, our meetings are televised, and and oh. people at home and everybody oh. likes to hear what we're talking about. So <laughs> we ask that you come and use the mic and <laughs> and. Uh, Where do I stand? Right here. Where's my light? <laughs> 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 <Just> makeup. <laughs> well, like, welcome. Okay. Well, uh, my name is Kat Bunker, and I'm the naturalist at the Nature Center. Mm -hmm. I have never run the place. Um, okay, so if you have a contained area, y populations will be self-regulated. Uh, sometimes it gets a little gory, like uh, moms will actually eat their own young, or uh, if they, they'll only provide enough food for the animals that they have, 
There will become rivalries. Uh, also, if it's a denser population, then it'll be easier for prey animal uh, for prey to come and get them and pick them off. Oh. Right now, the only prey animals that we have are the occasional cats that get dropped off in our area, which the nature center has to trap because we can't have them popping over the fence and getting mingling with our wild animals. So we're actually part of the problem because we, we have to catch the feral cats and send them away. If we let the feral cats out, they would help with the population. We could just release a bunch of snakes. No, okay. Uh, no, no, but no, we couldn't. Anyway, uh, populations that are self-contained will regulate themselves. Let me ask you a question. Be, being with the Nature Center, do you have thoughts on this? Well, coming from Lubbock, I have thoughts on this. Uh, the Lubbock Prairie Dog Town is a huge tourist attraction. And they went through an issue just like this, and they decided to make it a tourist attraction rather than, you know, having to do away with the prairie dogs. And they put money into it, and it is paid in spades. And I think that this city should try and contact Lubbock and see what they did exactly, uh, the wall container <coughs> that they built, and how much it costs to maintain it, and what how deep their wall is, and see what advice they have to offer. And I've never been to the other Prairie Dog Town, but everybody that I know that visits Lubbock goes there and makes the Prairie Dog Town a point of, of going to see it. It's a big thing. Now, when I'm there on Saturdays at the Nature Center, people will go just to have lunch there and watch the prairie dogs eat. And it used to be no, no one. And now uh, the whole driveway is lined with cars, and then they walk in and they go, we didn't even know this Nature Center was here. We were having lunch looking at the prairie dogs. So it's already bringing people towards the lake. So that's nice. That would be my vote. Interesting thought. I, I have I have been to the one in Lubbock, and it 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 is a tourist draw. I mean, it's uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm a native of San Angelo, and I can remember back some of the history of San Angelo. And once upon a time, we did have a prairie dog town out here off of Bell Street. And I don't know if it's still out there. Is any, what happened to those is prairie dogs? Yes, yes, ma'am, in that area. <laughs> Yes, there was a prairie dog colony there. I think it's been gone at least 10 or 12 years. I think it was the remnants of what was the zoo back in, in the 60s. But, okay. So I guess the question is what happened to him? I, I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't over our oversight. So, you know, I do have some concern about putting a prairie dog town here because this is the area that's been seen as for future development. Remember the, the lake study from a few years ago as a place to put a, like a resort hotel. So I'm a little hesitant to try to put fifty seventy five thousand dollars $75,000 in a prairie dog town specifically at that location. I'd rather come down here and do it or do it at another site after we relocate them. But my preference would be to, <clears throat> if, we, if we're gonna capture them or relocate them, work first with the state park to see if we could transfer as many as we could there or consider the, the Twin Buttes property if we got permission to, to relocate some there. <clears throat> that way we only have the cost of the relocation. What's the state park? What do they think? They're what? open to it, but I don't have any definite word yet. He's like, I do like perfect. the idea of a prairie dog town, but we don't have the money for it. I mean... Fifty, seventy, yeah. seventy-five thousand. We're just exploring. All right, we're just we're just talking about it at this point. Do you think the whole entire population would fit in that because it starts not, at the nature center and comes on down? Not likely. So I, I see it kind of twofold. One would be to relocate them, mm -hmm. and maybe we keep enough to create the tourist attraction, which is the Prairie Dog Town. Right. You, you would actually have to work on relocation anyways. Right, that's what even, I'm saying. Even if you we did that. To, we have to address, stop the spreading of them by relocating. 
<clears throat> and then containing. Further questions or comments from board members? I really just wanted to discuss, start this discussion okay. item, get the word out that, you know, we do realize we we have a situation with prairie dogs and are trying to figure out what to do with them. We just want to be above board and make sure everybody knows what we're talking about doing. I, I think as we move through this, though, I, I, I think uh, we would all be interested in hearing uh, what you hear from the state park people or, or uh, what you hear from the uh, Lubbock people or any, any information that you gather as, as you figure out what, you wanna, what we want to do. I'm sure we'd all be interested in hearing. Uh, and I, I think we all agree that the relocating thing is a good idea with a possible future outlook for a, a prairie park if we could, prairie dog park if we could. Uh, and I've, I've got to put, get some numbers figures. out there are tremendous. There are, there, there are a lot of prairie dogs. Yes, there are. Seems like we, <clears throat> I don't know if I, seems like we need to do something within the next few months, obviously, and the state park sounds to me like well, a marvelous idea. We're but. pretty sure that they've done their breeding for the spring so they probably won't likely have any more pups, but right. those pups will establish new colonies this yeah. summer. So we think they won't be spreading to this area until next spring. So we do have some time, but we need to come up with a plan. Have you looked at any other options of control or anything like that where you might- we, We've looked at them, but yeah. it's not the preferred method. We've, we've researched and found <clears throat> there's like a vacuum truck that actually <laughs> <laughs> vacuums. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. That's how you move them. <laughs> we've seen one in Colorado. We think there's one in the Lubbock area. So and we need to contact them to see what they might charge to do that. And it sucks prairie dogs into a container and mm -hmm. you just take them to the next location. <laughs> okay. Interesting. That is. Interesting. I have seen the one at the state park and it's up at the what is that called the, the north end and over on mercedes where they got their headquarters at there's prairie dogs that are all along the street there and i'm waiting for telephone poles or fire hydrants to fall over because they, they they're right down in them that because when i went down to the nature center it was even difficult to park for all the big holes that they yeah. make. Yeah. And it, that just kind of um, brings a safety factor that I don't want the city to have. They've, they've taken over the grounds. Well, we'll look forward to hearing more. Yeah. We will. <laughs> Before we move on, is there anybody, any other comments? Anybody want to say anything else? We're not looking for any decision on this. Yeah, no, we'll just put that one for another meeting and move on. But we've got to do something. Is that the consensus? Yeah. I guess at the next meeting, we'll come back with uh, some more details about, about the preferred option. Relocation, whatever. And, the And a schedule. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> next on the agenda. Discussions on upcoming funded and approved unfunded park improvement projects and recommendations of any matters related to. We, from time to time, we talk about what projects we have ongoing and what projects are coming up, and it's been a year since we've done that. So I want to just take a quick look at the projects that we ha have ongoing now. And um, first, I just want to show you where they're located. So starting from the right, Texas Bank Sports Complex, the restrooms and the concessions. <clears throat> I'll talk about the projects here in a minute. I'm just showing you where they are. Okay. Youth Sports Practice Complex, let me put you in the right location. <laughs> There's the Texas Bank Sports Complex, which is off of Bell Street. Uh, the Youth Sports Practice Complex off of uh, Edmond Boulevard, 29th Street. Brentwood Park, Forest Park and Howard Street. Unidad Park down here off um, Vista Del Arroyo and College Hills, Brown Park, and Santa Rita Park. There is one more 
Little Concho Park improvements. Just a little more information about each of those projects. The Brentwood Park renovation project is, is the design is almost complete for that project and we should be starting that here early this summer. The budget is $275,000, it's half cent sales tax and it's an in-house project. Our own staff is going to do those improvements like we've done other projects. <coughs> Texas Bank Sports Qu Complex Quad 2 restrooms and concessions is also half cent sales tax money, it's 708,000. We, we designed it, we bid it out, we got one bid, it was over budget, so we've been in the process of um, adjusting that design so that we can bid it back out and stay within the budget. And it should, should be going out for bid again here in the next month or two. Youth Sports Practice Complex is also half cent sales tax monies, uh, $1,750,000. $1, we've hired the design firm and we've begun the design process. Uh, you should be hearing more about that soon. Unidad Park Playground Refurbishment, the budget for that is $350,000. We have $175,000 from half cent sales tax. <coughs> we need to get grant, matching grant monies to do that project. And it's not a complete refurbishment of the park, it's just a refurbishment of the playground, which is quite large, and the fall zone material at that location. <coughs> Next, we have $150,000 of half cent sales tax for the renovation of Brown and Santa Rita parks. And I met with the Homeowners Association last week about these. Uh, they're, they're a little bit down the road, a couple of years down the road, but they want to get in motion to raise some additional funds because it, 150,000 won't be enough money to do those renovations. And that that is the end of our half cent sales tax for uh, funds for parks and recreation, which makes me a little nervous to be honest because there's nothing in line after that. This other project, the Middle Concho Park Improvements, that is a, a state grant, boat, boating access grant for improvements to the boat ramp, the restrooms, the parking at that location in Middle Concho Park. And the matching funds <coughs> were from the Lake Nasworthy um, Fund, which is for interest earnings from the trust, the Lake Nasworthy Trust. Any questions on those? ongoing projects. That project, we're in the process of beginning the design on that one. The middle Concho project. Now the next list, it's a, a separate sheet. It's a long list. Those who were here last year remember we went through the process of identifying all the projects that were in the capital improvement plan or that we were conceiving we listed those all out, and then we had a sub. We had a committee that met to talk about each of those projects and to score each of those projects, so we could prioritize them and let staff know which ones are most important. And that sheet shows you uh, the results of that ranking. Now, since that time, we have added Civic League Park Botanic Gardens to that list, and it hasn't been entered into the prioritization. <coughs> so, as you see, the Community Recreation Center is our, our top top project. Any thoughts or questions on those? Just a question on that trail extension, 14th and 29th. Is that developed or undeveloped land through there? Is it what? Is that developed or undeveloped <laughs> land on 14th on the trail at 14th and 29th? I'm sorry, I missed on the question. The trail extension. Yes. Is that through developed land or is that undeveloped? Oh, it's property? through it's through parkland. Oh, for, 14th through 29th. Okay, the city. Here. Yeah. Let me go back to this map. The city did purchase much of this property here. There's 29th Street here. So the, the river trail stops at 14th Street in Harmon Park, <laughs> right here. Mm -hmm. uh, we own land along North uh, Veterans Memorial Drive. It's listed here as North River Drive. Veterans Memorial Drive up to 19th Street by North Concho Park. And the city has acquired much of this property here over the last 10 years, 10 or 12 years. So we have, except for the very, very end, we have complete access from 14th Street to 29th Street. <coughs> now, 
at the very end, it's a it's a cl- it's a narrow bottom. Like we have to, if we get to that point, we'll have to work with Hirschfeld Steel to try to gain more property to to run a trail through there, or cross over the river. I guess my question was, that's undeveloped land at presently, it's right? Undeveloped. It's, yeah, it's totally developed. undeveloped. But it is it is park land. This section here between 14 yeah, I'm, I'm and 19th Street, that. it is it is park land on the south, the west side of the, the street between the river. <coughs> Lori, did you have any thoughts or questions? The only thing that stands out to me is that you said that the sales tax ends. Can you explain? Yeah, I can't hear it. Uh, since I'm too new. I can't hear. You can't hear? No, I'm sorry. I hear, I hear I my know. echo. Well, I, I have a hard <laughs> time hearing. It's kind of down here, too. I can't hear you. The sales tax. Sales tax. Can you explain oh, why it ends? Why it ends? Okay. Oh, sorry. Is there anything we can do about that? <laughs> Well, we would have to have a public referendum or get council action. Uh, okay, the first half of the sales tax was, was in 1999 for the dredging of Lake Nasworthy. That was done. It was a five-year uh, tax. It sunset in 2004. The public went, we went back out. The public authorized the city to go forward with another half cent sales tax in 2004 which funded most of the projects, including the funding for these half cent sales tax projects here, um, including the river. It was it went back out in 2010 for another referendum for um, basically to, to prioritize water and, um, I'm trying to think, much of it went to water and it kind of put an end to the rest of the half cent sales tax that we got. It doesn't mean we can't get any more, but we would have to go through the process to ask for more. And there's a there's not a there's not a lot out there to ask for. Now this so this is something you took to the taxpayers and they voted on it. Yes. Okay. Yes. In 2004 and 2010. So to do any of these bigger projects like the community park, of course we're going to have to work with partners and other mm-hmm. sponsors to do these projects, but. Th- that alone won't do it. It would either have to be a bond issue or a change in the house that sells tax. Combined with grants and partnerships. How would you go about doing a bond issue? And would that be an idea to get some of your stuff funded? Yes. That, that, would, that would be a way to go. It takes some... Better than the than extending the half cent sales tax? It depends on how it's extended. If it's extended just for some projects or, I mean, it just depends how, how, how it's redone and it, how the money comes in, the amount of money that we get. If we want to kind of push for a community rec center, it may be better to do a bond issue. And maybe that's a separate discussion on I, I, I think that would be part of our, our rec center mm-hmm. discussions as we move into yeah, as we move forward. How we, how we can fund and form a groups and look, look to get started on a rec center. And some of these projects, you know, if we had just a little bit of matching funds, like the, uh, the trail, trying to find the trail any of the trail extensions, especially the, the South Concho Neighborhood Park Renovation and River Trail Extension. We can, we've been very successful in getting trail grants and those are 80-20 match. So it wouldn't take much half cent sales tax to match 80% to, to build these trails. Wouldn't take much money. But we're at the end of our monies now. It may be a combination of a bond and asking for some house and sales tax and, gr- and grants. I don't know, the economy at the moment isn't letting the sales tax go up a whole lot, and, no. and there's there's a lot more limitations there than 
than just yeah, the need for the park. If it's already existing. Mark? If it's already existing, wouldn't it be much easier to get it extended without tying it to certain projects to be able to continue forward to improve the recreational environment in the city? Yeah, I don't know if it'd have to go back out for referendum or if it would just take council action. I have to do some permanent. research. Yeah. Yeah, was a, a way that they could essentially make it permanent so that we can. Budget council had it. discussions on that within the last year about what to yeah, do I about the, the sales tax, but I don't think that they came to any resolution of what they were going to do. I mean, there's a good argument. The reason we came back to San Angelo is quality of life, and that's what we're talking about mm -hmm. with the parks and recreations. Right. And council's priority has been <coughs> the water and the streets, which everybody, nobody argues with that. That is no, that, no, correct. Not arguing about correct. That that's, a, that's a top priority. But you've got to do some of this, too, <laughs> to, to improve that quality of life and get folks to live here <clears throat> and enjoy living here. I think like we did the rest of the trails, though, if we go out and, and gather up some of the uh, the grant awards that, right. that we did before and, and go to council and say we have you know, 80, 20 grant money, all we need is 20, that's that's a little more persuasive to them. Uh, yeah, to continue. Grant money we already still, have that half. that and easy to get. For trails, <laughs> yeah, we, we've been pretty lucky with trail money. The problem is I can't go out for the grant until I've got the match in hand. <laughs> oh, it works the other way, huh? It, it seems like in, I mean, I've, I was part of a nonprofit not long ago, and, and grant money is sh shriveling up. it is I think project funding may be a separate discussion item but and, and I'm, I'm eager to talk about that because we are at the end of the monies and <clears throat> we have so much more work to do we're getting midway towards the end of the year when the next budget cycle will start anyway so we can start right in on some projects or this so one will be approved here right soon which means we can start talking about another budget year well in terms of projects you can talk about it anytime. depends on how they're funded you can talk about any time we'll add that to the future agendas this has not sales tax it's not not necessarily tied to the operating budget any questions on ongoing up and ongoing funded and unfunded projects. Wish we had lots of money to spread around. All it takes is money and time. Uh, let's see. Next on the agenda. Is that the report on the budget? No. Yeah, it is. Report yes. on the FY1718 budget for Parks and Recreation Divisions and recommendation of any matters related to. The advisory board typically doesn't weigh in on matters of budget, but y'all have asked to kind of get an idea about the budget. There's a whole completely separate process to input and have the budget reviewed, and it goes straight through city staff to city council. But I'm gonna show you what we have in parks and recreation. So first I wanna show you what the big big pieces are and if you see the number 101 the 100 series that's the, your general funded uh, programs divisions T the 200 series there is the enterprise funds so this is the texas bank sports complex it's a 200 series it's an enterprise fund so it has a fund balance it maintains a fund balance the other ones don't um, with the exception of these 600 series funds they're designated designated revenue and expenditure accounts. So um, those monies that go into those accounts can stay in those accounts from year to year. So parks operating budget is about $3.4 million. We have a, a contract for the water lily collection, as you know. It's currently budgeted at $99,850. There's an asterisk, asterisk there because there is a clause in the contract that um, increases that amount 
uh, by a couple of percentage points. And uh, that hasn't it's yet not been inputted into that, that budget for next year, and it needs to be. <clears throat> it's, it won't be a problem because it's just a few thousand dollars. Texas Bank Sports Complex, the operating budget is right under $800,000. That's just operating. It's not the programming. You'll see that here in a second. And then two smaller accounts, one for the plant a tree program for, for folks to put in money for trees and benches and plaques, and we can spend out of that account 3000 and for Riverfest, 30000 So total for parks is $4.3 million. Recreation side, recreation operating is uh, $950,000. The pool, 166000 and those are 100 series general fund. And nutrition is 263,000, 64,000. 103, it's a federally, federal or state uh, funded program. And here again, you see the 203 series for the Texas Bank Sports Complex, the programming. That's the tournaments, the athletics, the, uh, the league, league play. And total for recreation, just under 1.5 million. And then total for parks and recreation, about 5.8 million. Looking a little bit closer, looking at revenues and expenditures for parks. As you'll see here, parks' main source of revenue is the, is the general fund. But they do bring in some monies uh, from rentals, the pavilions, and some of the grounds, rentals of some of the grounds. And then there's an inner fund uh, that goes from recreation to parks for maintenance of the grounds at the pool. There is some amount for house and sales tax that, that started in 2004 with that uh, referendum, and it increases by a couple, uh, small, small amount each year. Currently, parks gets $285,000 from house and sales tax to maintain the sports complexes, just the sports complexes, like the soccer fields, Texas Bank Sports Complex, all of them. So their total revenue, $3.4 million. And <coughs> they've got a zero budget, zero balance budget. And you see the amounts that go into personnel and operating. Now, through this process of the budget, we are allowed to ask for either new positions, staff positions, or changes in positions and also uh, increases to our budget for different reasons. So these are the, the only ones that we have in Parks and Recreation that we're submitting for this year. Um, and to be honest, I think it's not likely they'll get approved because of the condition of the budget. But we're looking at promoting a couple of permission positions to create a better, uh, more uh, across the board ladder effect for guys starting out than moving up the ladder as they gain experience and time. The target increase request for parks, money to maintain the dog park, uh, put back some money into botanical and agriculture, which has fertilizers, pre-emergence, grounds, um, supplies. That was essentially taken out back in the recession in 2009 and never was put back in. Some additional money to maintain the parks along the river, or uh, water utilities funding, funds to help better maintain Padrone Park, which parks never did get once it was renovated. The money to uh, maintain the LED lights under the bridges along the river. Money to maintain Middle Creek Park, which wasn't put in the budget once we renovated that park. Uh, money to uh, maintain the, the new restrooms concessions at Texas Bank Sports Complex once they're built. Um, Repairs at the shop, park shop, off of uh, Veterans Memorial Drive. The personnel request is the one I showed you with the promotions. Producers Park Maintenance is funds uh, that we didn't get when we built that park. <laughs> the projects amount, 100000 We had great success a couple of years ago when the bu budget was good that um, we had about $200,000 left in our budget. City manager authorized us to keep 100000 of that for the following year. And we use that strictly for improvement projects. So we re redid the lights at uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Park. 
We built kayak launches. We breeded some turf. Lots of other neat projects that we couldn't have done otherwise. And so we're asking for that again. More money for vehicle maintenance. And there you see the increase for the water load collection contract. And then we do have a need for to buy new equipment at the Texas Bank Sports Complex because that equipment that equipment's getting old. It's some of the original equipment from 2009. Any question on any, any of those? And I, I must admit, we don't have a lot of <laughs> confidence we'll get much of this, if any. So looking at all the expenses in parks, pretty much zero out. Um, yeah, those are all the expenses in, in parks and the Texas Bank Sports Complexes. Moving on to recreation, they have a lot more, they bring in a lot more revenue. They do get some general fund, but they also bring in about a third of their revenue from programs and events and athletics. So you see here the revenue from special events, programs, athletics, uh, the senior programs, nature center, rentals, and general fund. So just under a million dollars in total revenue and also a zero uh, balance budget, seeing expenses for personnel and operating. This is just the pool operation. It does not have a fund balance, but it does have an account. It's called a contingency as account that uh, monies that are left over, uh, revenue that's over expenditures. If we get permission, we can carry that money over to the next year, and that helps us fund repairs, um, purchasing new furniture, whatever we need for the following year at the pool. So there you see the revenue for the pool, lessons, admissions. We do get $4,500 in naming rights all the rentals, the concessions, for a total of 167,000. And there you see the personnel. And there's this, that operating includes the contingency account that I talked about. So it has a zero balance budget, but the revenues has been always over the expenditures <coughs> every year. Nutrition, it's a standalone program, the 103 account. You see the federal funds that come in, the contributions we get through the program, the charges that people who aren't part of the program pay for meals, and then the general fund does also help pay for this program. <coughs> and it's also zero, zero balance. Texas Bank Sports Complex, in terms of uh, um, all the revenue, Advertising and naming rights, about 30,000. Concessions, rentals, registrations. We do get 50,000 from hotel occupancy tax funds. And I th the interest account income comes from the fund balance. And then we do get a good amount of general fund. <coughs> and there you see the expenses. And it, 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 except for the first couple of years, it ran in the red the first couple of years, and then it's been in the black the last several years. And it's usually, you see here a balance of uh, almost $2,000 at the end of the year that's projected for next year. It's usually been more than that because we don't spend as much as we're authorized to spend, mostly in terms of personnel. And so that's why we have a fund balance in that account of almost 500,000, which may be a source for funding the equipment. So I think that's it for the budget. And Diana and Roger here, if you have any questions specifically about parks and recreation. I want to thank you because I think I'm the one that asked for the budget yeah. review and it's been very helpful to understand where some of our needs are and what's going on so it, it really helps to appreciate what you, the work you've gone to to do this 
You're welcome. And you got a printout of the more detail sheets. Yes, I've got that. We couldn't show <laughs> on yeah. the slides. It showed the just di different justifications, the explanations for the monies in those accounts. And so, our we in a few weeks we'll be talking with the budget committee to present our budget and talk about our our concerns. And then the budget goes to council uh, starting in July and. They make decisions on it in, in the meetings in August. It will be interesting to watch August council meetings. Any other questions, discussion? I agree, thank you. That was nice to get all that information. Um, let's see, consideration of future agenda items. Anybody? I've got one. Ready? Um, some time ago, over at the senior center, remember we had that building knocked down. Fought to get that building knocked down, I, and I know it's down. I've, I've driven past there a number of times, but it is. It just appears to be a dirt lot. Does it? So were we going to make it a parking lot or? Yes. So a report. Can we on get that a project? status. Yeah, we, we've been. I guess we can't talk about it, but we've been waiting on the design of the church. Just an update. Okay. Anybody else? And I'll come back with the prairie dog plan. Prairie dog update. <laughs> oh yeah, please <laughs> keep us on that one, and and let the people that are at the pool know that we all look for a great season, and hope you all have a lot of fun over there and a lot of uh, attendance coming up because I know what is it Saturday right is is the opening. I think I read. Uh, right. Good luck. I hope it all goes. Yeah, noon, noon to six. So from noon to two, it's two dollars for admission, and then after two, it goes up to the regular price. And then we'll be open all all weekend, including Monday, and then the schedule starts uh, Tuesday through Sunday, and then we we'll be during the regular season. And then the summer will be closed uh, on Mondays. When I did go by the dog park, when I went over to my doctor's appointment this morning, and there must have been, I don't know, four, five, six white trucks over there with with guys working. Yes. I, I didn't get to pull in because, I mean, they had the parking lot kind of jammed, but I was kind of late for my appointment. But I did go slow and cruise by so I could see, and, and they were obviously doing some kind of work. Mm -hmm. um, but I noticed that the last time I was there, they were trenching out the water, and, and that's filled in. And it looked like the fence had been repaired where they had messed with the fence. Uh, but maybe we can throw an update in on that and see if it's, okay. if, if it's ready to be in, uh, yeah, used, yeah. crowned, opened, whatever isn't, we would like to do. Isn't that in June? Sometime in June? June, yes. I, yes, Roger? <laughs> Early June? <laughs> We're actually meeting over there tomorrow to talk about the progress staff is. We'll look forward to hearing. Maybe we can get an update. Please. Are we still on TV? Yes. I'm sure we are. I've got a couple of barking dogs. Do you accept them at 1 o'clock in the morning, or how do, how do you do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> any other future agenda items that anybody would like from the board? I'll entertain them. If you've noticed, I've started putting the next schedule. Oh, very yes, good. I did June that. the 22nd. <laughs> Why haven't we been doing that? All I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Mark your calendars. I'll have to do that. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. Meeting is adjourned. 